Hello, welcome to Advanced Retro Adaptics. I'm Tyler Disney. This is my second Ask Me Anything episode. The first one was about money. Uh, I answered questions about whether I invest, if I'm lean fire, coast fire, and uh, my own sort of system for managing FU stashes and that sort of thing. So if you missed that, check it out. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be answering a couple of questions about my relationship with work and uh, consumerism and lust for money and power. So let's get to it. So Gravy asks, do you miss anything from your past life as an on-grid worker slash consumer? So to me, those are two very different things. So I'll answer them one at a time. I don't miss anything about being a consumer. Um, I used to get off on buying nice things, nice beer, nice Airbnbs, whatever. Um, I feel kind of embarrassed about that attitude now. For one reason, it's just very deeply unremarkable for someone like me to be able to afford, you know, nice things. It's like, okay, you were able to swing a job good enough that you can buy nice things. That's nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, that's really not a big deal. And um, you are not actually powerful and special because of that in the way that advertising insists to us, tries to convince us that we are. So that's that feeling that I got from when I was when I would buy things just because I could um, pretty hollow. So I don't miss that at all. What I miss, I do miss. There are some things I miss from being a, a worker from my career. Uh, I miss being I miss being a part of a diverse, uh, talented, smart, driven group of people who are working on work that is important and value adding to the world and being a skilled, competent, contributing member of that group. And I miss large scale engineering projects um, to a certain degree. Um, that was cool. <laughs> and I think that I really lucked out. I think I was really fortunate to have such a cool experience early on. Um, with that group of people, a lot of whom are still really good friends of mine. Um, I, I, I've, I've moved on now and like some of those things that I got from that, I get from other places. Like you don't need to work a W2 job in order to, um, work on cool projects with interesting, smart, talented people. Um, it just happens to be the most common delivery mechanism for that sort of thing. Um, but anyways, like I said, I got lucky. I do kind of miss that. Uh, but it's hard to get and it's hard to hold on to. Um, and uh, I've, I've just got other things that I want to do with my life. So um, it's, um, it's not that difficult to let go of. So the other question was, how do you let go of the ego satisfaction of a white collar career as well as the dark lust for money and status? So I'm going to break this one down too. How do you let go of the ego satisfaction of a white collar career? So here's the thing about ego satisfaction. It isn't durable. As an experience, ego satisfaction is this constant sort of striving, never satisfied, actually drive that humans have to feel powerful or special or something like that. Um, and there, there is, you get hits of it from a career to be certain, but my experience was that it's a bit of a treadmill. You don't ever get to a point where you're like, aha. I've reached, uh, I've reached it, so I am satisfied. So in other words, if, if the question is, if, if, I, if I may be permitted to rephrase the question was, how do you let go of ego contentment from a white collar career? Well, I never had that. I didn't have ego contentment. And I think that contentment is something, it has to do with inner work. And if you're doing the inner work, it doesn't matter if you've got a white collar career, a blue collar career, a green collar career, or whatever kind of career or non-career you have. I think that I think that ego satisfaction from things like careers is kind of a red herring. I mean, what we want is to feel that we are enough as human beings in the world just to exist. And I, that doesn't excuse us from, you know, just um, not contributing and and, and having duties and, and being useful members of society and that sort of thing. But I, but ego satisfaction is just, I guess the answer to the question is, is you let go of ego satisfaction by realizing how much of smoke and mirrors and bullshit ego satisfaction is. You know, I, when I became not a white collar worker anymore, I, I, 
experienced some feelings of, oh, you know, I don't have this sort of source of uh, meaning or ego satisfaction hits. I'm not getting those hits anymore. And I had to deal with that. And I feel like I'm better now as a human being because I had to deal with that. So I guess the answer is um, I worked through it and my experiences helped me understand how kind of shallow and temporary uh, eco satisfaction of any kind is. And it was, it was more of an inner, inner work journey, uh, than anything else. So, ha right. So then the, the other question is, um, how do you let go of the dark lust for money and status? Yeah. So breaking this up in, into money and status, they're different. So, uh, step one, recognize, recognize how much cultural programming there is out there that money is so great and avoid it. I do that. I avoid as much of that as I can. Um, the others to the flip side is to steep yourself in wisdom. So I read Thoreau. I read, here's the thing, all of the people that we call wise, all of our sages, all of our elders for all of time and all cultures everywhere, they pretty much all say the same thing that money isn't that great. There's variations to that theme. Some are super pro poverty. Some are just like, Hey, chasing wealth for wealth's sake, kind of sketch. Uh, but they're all kind of on that side of the spectrum of things. So I read them and I said, yeah, maybe all these smart folks know what they're talking about. So I'm going to take a leap of faith and I'm going to, uh, try, I'm going to try that. And I did. So at my peak, I was spending something like $70,000. And at my, uh, minimum of about a year ago, I was spending $7,000 a year. Currently I'm spending more like $10,000 a year and my life is way better now that I'm spending less data. Cool. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a good life. So that helped me let go of the dark lust for it. I can lust after other cool things, um, that aren't so like ephemeral. Um, yeah. Uh, so status, status is interesting. I'm not totally anti-status. I don't think that a desire for status is necessarily bad. I mean, humans are social beings, right? We're not lone wolves. And even wolves are social beings. That's why it's like a, it's kind of like a bet. We think it's romantic, but it's not like lone wolves actually eat bugs and stuff. They don't have good lives. So we're designed to want to be well esteemed by others. Cause that's how human culture has always worked. Um, and obviously status gets blown up and it goes toxic. And I think that has a lot to do with, um, we're not that good, uh, at the sort of communications and technologies and globalized network, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into that, but we're just, we're not very good at executing um, at, at, at being in the world when we have access, when like every, literally everyone in the world can know what we're doing. Like Theoretically speaking, everyone in the world could watch this video. And I mean, that sort of puts me in a cold sweat, but we're just not kind of designed for that, right? So I think that the trick is to be aware of the dynamic of status and it just be intentional about it. Um, know who you want to be well esteemed by and put in effort to not care about being esteemed by the people you don't. So who are the people who share your values? And it might be worth pretending like you care that they think of you well. Um, so, for, I mean, for me, there's a type of person, there's a demographic, and there's a specific list of people that I care about them enough that um, I want them to see me as a person of integrity, who's honest, hardworking, kind, intelligent, ethical, blah, 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 right? Like, I want those people, I want those specific people to hold me in high regard, and I think that's fine. Um for other people, I don't care. I don't care if mainstream culture, uh, if I'm, if I'm high status by mainstream culture, because I don't share mainstream cultures, uh, emergent values. Um, the problem, the problem comes or comes when we're not choosy or we're not aware of, and we're not intentional, um, what group of people it is that we're seeking status from. So my recommend, my recommendation is just to become aware and to intentionally uh, understand who it is that you want to seek uh, status from. In, in a lot of these, I think that there's, um, there is a danger when we start moving towards autonomy with throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And I think that there's, there's a fair amount of this, particularly in the fire, fire sphere, um, wh which is an anti-work sentiment. And I'm not, I'm not anti-work 
uh, I, I don't go in for that or rather my feelings on it are a lot more nuanced than you get, which is the branding of, you know, hashtag anti-work. I think a lot of people knee jerk react against things like being productive, hard work and being useful, like being a useful human being just because those things are associated with work, which is associated with capitalism and capitalism is bad and all this other stuff. I don't fully just go, I'm not just all in on that whole deal. Like I like hard work. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, yeah, the, the, the critics, there are criticisms there. I share lots of the criticisms, but let's maintain a little bit of nuance here. Um, yeah, so I'm like I'm not anti work. I'm anti playing someone else's game and not realizing it. I'm anti being unfree and not knowing how to get free. I'm anti spending most of your energetic years of life trudging through routine just because that's what everyone else says. And I'm anti victim mentality. I'm pro personal autonomy. I'm pro figuring yourself and what you want to do in the world out. I'm pro large numbers of people who are able to be free and autonomous and chase their own stoke and bring their gifts to the world, whatever that looks like. 